You know, it doesn't seem like very long ago that the phrase Canadian television held slightly negative connotations, even if it included a certain well-intentioned earnestness. But these days, the feeling seems to be that Canadian TV is something to celebrate without, without any guilty nationalist pangs whatsoever. Shows like Flashpoint and Little Mosque on the Prairie are unequivocal successes here at home and have also resonated with audiences in other countries around the globe. The same praise can be bestowed upon CBC's customs thriller The Border, which follows the agents of the fictitious Immigration and Customs Security Department as they confront national security issues. The Border is currently airing on more than 20 networks worldwide and is about to enter its third season. And it's got an extra boost this past year when Grace Park joined the cast as Liz Carver, an agent with the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Grace Park is a Vancouver-raised actress who scored, who scored the border role hot off her star-making turn as Boomer on the critically acclaimed sci-fi series Battlestar Galactica. And I'm pleased to welcome Grace Park back to Studio Q. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Nice to see you. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. It's great to be here. I, I understand that your character, Liz, actually doesn't make an appearance this season until the third <laughs> show of the border, you ran into some trouble at the end of last season. Trouble, you could say that. What, yeah. uh, you want to? Yeah. I, I mean, we, it's aired, so we're not letting anything. We yeah, yeah, we basically yeah. got gunned down um, with, by, I guess, four or five, I don't, a dozen people with um, fully automatic weapons, and uh, it was it held them hanging, hung in the balance. I mean, because we didn't really know who was going to make the show or not. <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of strictly like job wise, like do I have a job or not? Right. So it's the cliffhanger means even the actor doesn't know if if you're dead or yeah that's alive. that's usually the way I mean am I being cynical I think that's the way they kind of do it and maybe because this is having been in the biz just for a little bit they'll they'll leave it like that in case you think of coming back wanting to renegotiate your wages right 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 we can keep you dead <laughs> yeah you ain't coming back <laughs> and and so when did you find out I mean assuming the fact that you're here and we're talking about this season and the fact that I saw I play an ghost. advanced ghost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But it, it does suggest that you were back on the show. When did you find out that, that your character was um, was making it through the bullet wounds? <laughs> yeah, and I do have bullet wounds. I think it took, I can't remember, probably a few months later. But one of the things I had said um, off the bat, because they had so many of the characters, their lives, their, their fate was in the balance, that um, I was wondering who was going to make it and who wasn't. And... Maybe I'm not sure why, but they were like, "No, no, we're, no one's gonna die." And I was like, "Come on!" And I, I, maybe it's because they hadn't decided yet. I don't know. They had to see the cut being put together, all that kind of business. But I was essentially like, "Look, you can't do that," especially coming from Battlestar, where people are dying left, right, and center right. all around you. Any on the border too. There's characters that have cast members have been have Cat, killed, killed off. I guess, but not <laughs> right. necessarily the main, you know, main uh, crew. Okay. So I, I was totally telling them like. You know, you, you can't do this to your audience. They're a smart audience. You can't uh, just pull this and then have They them want expect. me, Grace Park. No. <laughs> I was like, I will take it for the team. Someone's got to go. Last time I talked to you, it was about Battlestar Galactica. Uh, and, and that was a show you've been doing since 2003. Mm -hmm. Five years or so, you, 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 start, you were shooting that program, and, which became a big part of your identity. Obviously, this is a, a big show, and you were a big part of it. What was it like jumping into another program uh, already in progress after being part of the development and, and being through Battlestar Galactica for five years? That was a little unusual, but um, being that the show, the people working on it were so open and friendly, and uh, um, it seemed, I was surprised how smooth the transition was. I had, we finished Battlestar, and I had also done The Cleaner at the same time in mm. L.A., and then so within, uh, I don't know, 12 hours of rapping on one show, I, I came to the border, and it was almost like, where have you guys been? It's like, uh, it, it felt like we've all been hanging out already, and it was like 7 a.m. that morning, and just already shooting the, you know, we, can I say? Breeze? That? Yes. Yeah. And, and, uh, <laughs> and the transition from humanoid to human was not difficult Difficult, for you. very, very challenging. <laughs> I have to play I'm a still, human? Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. I, was, I petitioned against that. I, I wanted just to play robot from now on. <laughs> we don't really have robots on the border. No, no, I play a Cylon. I and he was Slade. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, you're part of this new face of Canadian television, which, I, as I mentioned in the intro, is, uh, one could say, on a decided upswing these days. What's your sense of why Canadian shows are doing so well? That's really interesting. I was actually thinking about that myself the other day. And um, I mean, Canada is obviously a, a fairly new nation, and compared to the U.S., we're quite a bit smaller. So we just have a smaller talent pool to draw from. And if you're going to have 
uh, a small town versus New York City, and obviously we're not a small town, but it's, it's going to take a little bit longer for things to really show their colors, like what is the talent of this country, and we have, we have many, many talents to draw from. But I do think that because the U.S. has come to Canada for quite a bit, our, our currency is being you know, quite advantageous, advantageous for us before, we had a, a basis here growing of a, like crew and principal part actors. An industry had developed has developed. Yeah, and it was mostly supportive. But I think after a while, people didn't want to play second fiddle. They had their own ideas they wanted to do, and some of it, some of them went down to the states and came back, or some of them just wanted to stay here. There's a lot of people that just are loyal. What, to Canada. what do you think f- the border or Flashpoint, for example, are is doing? Uh, what are you do, doing that wasn't done before? That where people are sort of saying. That doesn't look like Canadian I TV. Know. Yeah. I, I think uh, on, a, on one level is that they 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 were doing something first of all that's internationally interesting, and also I think the production quality has totally gone up. It, it looks it looks much slicker. They have an interesting look. They're not trying to necessarily emulate. I, I haven't seen Flashpoint, <clears throat> sorry, yet, but um, they're not necessarily emulating American shows. They're finding out what they want to do and something that hits a chord that people that are resonating with people and it's also action just to confirm are you saying the littlest hobo was not internationally interesting <laughs> was that canadian <laughs> what what was it oh yes hey i All was right. little i don't, I don't know dogs. where shows are made you just watch like <laughs> those, <kit. laughs> those are our dogs i mean doug it was just one dog <laughs> one uh, dog <laughs> as u.s agent liz carver on this show you 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 kind of are representing the face of america <laughs> uh, to the Canadians. Now, interestingly, you were born in Los Angeles. Yeah, so I am American in case so anyone wants you're, you're officially an American. Yes, officially and unofficially. And, and not officially. <laughs> but, yeah, but you grew up you, most of your life in Vancouver. Yes, I grew up pretty much most of the time there. But you, okay. Did and I confuse so, you? No, no, no. no LA, I, I, Calgary, I, I, I'm Vancouver. I'm surprised that you wouldn't say, well, I'm, I'm Canadian. I'm totally not Canadian. That, but, but you're also officially and unofficially American. Yes, but I'm also officially Canadian. <laughs> So I, it's fine. Can you be it's dual? Right, yeah, no, no, I'm just curious. Is I this mean, a test? Mo- no, no. Most people would say, oh, no, no, I'm on a Canadian show. You know, they'd want to defer to uh, or, or Oh, so I should that not say that I'm American to- at this point. Well, no, it's, it's bad. You're going to kick me well, out. Well, here was my point. <laughs> you're, you're playing Liz Carver, mm-hmm. who is an American. Now, do you actually think about playing a role of a, a do you have to play the American slightly different from a, the way you would play a Canadian even though you're across the border from each other in this uh, I know I have been and and, to, and having done other American shows I never thought about doing an American accent but one of the things I wanted to do was make sure I don't sound too Canadian and of course having worked in TV for a while um, there's certain words you, or you you make sure you don't say words a certain way I don't want to say mm-hmm. boot and who's. And right. no one, anyone says it that way anyway. Sorry, those are Americans right, always right, like right. teasing me. Because we all say who's. Yeah, so, you know, so who's up on the roof. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> or not the roof? I forget. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So um, I have tried to make sure that she comes across, to make sure she comes across a little more American. Um, what does that mean? I think besides the, the little the things, <laughs> besides the who's. <laughs> Um, is uh, inflections in in the way one speaks, and it was funny because I had a friend who um, my, some American people thought he was gay because the way we had an inflection at the end of our name. Mm. So he would say Jerry, and they'd think that this big, you know, six foot one dude was yeah not straight because right. we're like, why? It's like, how would you guys say it? And they'd say Jerry. Like everything would just kind of go down. And this was my you know beginnings of my little lesson. So you're saying we're not all gay. <laughs> well, inside I thought, we are. At I least thought I we am. Were the, I, I was happy with the we're the gay neighbor to the north. <laughs> we're the that's, gay neighbor. That, that's who yeah, we that's are. Yeah, that's an American yeah. thing. All on right. Us, huh? Okay. So yeah. I it, it's a, obviously there's lots of things about. Now let me confuse this even more because you're as we've famously now established Canadian and American, <laughs> but you're also of Korean heritage. Yes. How did you self-identify when you're growing up in Vancouver? Um, I think. It wasn't really an issue. I think, if anything, it was actually a little bit later in life. Um, there was barely any Asian kids in my class. I think there was like three of us in elementary school. And I probably even forgot until I had to really think about it. There might have been one more. But um, I felt like I was just kind of one of the rest of the kids. I didn't get bullied. There was no teasing. I surprisingly got very, very little. They mm. just called me maybe like gross grass or something for grace. Um, but then other than that, um, it wasn't until high school a little bit. So I think I just really identified myself. Like it was just seamless. That's I didn't have a transition from mm. being in one family and switching to another. So it was always normal to grow up like Korean, Canadian at home and then going out and then always speaking what English. What about going into acting? You do a, a psychology degree at UBC, right? 
and then uh, you obviously made a decision at some point. I know you were in Edgemont when you were a kid, mm-hmm. but you, but but to to pursue acting. Did you ever think that, uh, given the dearth of roles for Koreans, we've had a you know, <laughs> uh, we've had some great Asian actresses on the show who've talked about the fact that you know they were in the, in the past there really hasn't been that much to do you know uh, mm-hmm. or offered that is you know mm-hmm. did did you was that ever a concern for you? No, I think it was more of a concern for my parents. They were probably they had more open eyes about what my career might look like and I was uh, a lot more in the dark and probably better for me because I just wanted to climb that hill then. I just wanted to make it to the top of the mountain, um, which was the mountain of no from my parents. <laughs> what, what did they want you to do? They wanted me to do something more professional. Something doctor? More, no, they never pushed doctor. I mean, my sister got the doctor thing, so I thought I, I'm <laughs> right. clear. She took that one. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I paid her off pretty well. <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> With my paper route. Good. Doctor's out of the way. Now what's left? What I do know. we have to do? But so they, they, I didn't get the stereotypical pressure. I didn't have do the lawyer accountant thing. They just wanted me to do something. My mom even said something like, why don't you go into um, uh, interior design, something like that. Something that I think they feel like they could tell their friends. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, but now they can tell their friends, right? They're yeah. Now th- they've got to be proud of you now. And who doesn't get CBC? <clears throat> uh, well, some people don't get CBC. What do you mean? Well, oh, like get, get it, it up yeah, here? Yeah. Get it? Well, I don't know. Yeah. But that's, but Neither, they... I'm one of them. <laughs> you don't watch. <laughs> no. You just don't shoot it. Yeah. Uh, but they, but they, so they're now, they, now they, they're happy with our daughter oh as an actress. Oh my gosh, they're thrilled. They're yeah. thrilled. They're absolutely, it's, they've been very supportive. Let me ask way. you about this character then, speaking of your parents, and the sex scenes. Um, oh, I know, that's exactly what I was thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> but because uh, you, I remember on the very first uh, episode that you were on last year, your, your intro, it was clear to the viewer that Agent Liz Carver is very in touch with her sexuality. Mm. But she also has a very pronounced moral center. Her father is a Methodist minister. minister so yes. so uh, uh, can you talk about the two sides of your character, Liz Carver? Yeah, I think that... Um, she grew up um, having those good moral backgrounds and her dad raising her and her three brothers together. But at the same time, anyone who grows up like that, not necessarily you're going to walk I- exactly in your parents' shoes. So I think having one foot in the world of your friends and the media, you're going to be susceptible to what your friends are doing and what you want to do. And being uh, a young woman, she has her own desires. And so I don't think she's become very clear on what that is yet. So. Mm hot guy in front of her working together and so she she thought she'd go for a romp and I don't think she does that all the time <laughs> I'm I'm gonna put say that now <laughs> right, right, he was right. the first <laughs> right, right. Uh, it just happened to be the first episode in the, within the first hour but <laughs> but she's not something she uh, and, and then in real life Grace you've become something of a sex symbol you, uh, not yeah, only are there several websites devoted to you you've also made Maxim magazine's hot list uh, is that Always empowering or sometimes uncomfortable? Hmm. Um, I don't know if it's always empowering, but I don't know if it's necessarily uncomfortable per se. Um, there's certain photos that sure I don't really like having out there. Uh, not necessarily the Maxim ones, but um, I would say it's important to decide what you're going to do before you go out and start doing everything mm. and maybe maybe you start and then you realize you don't want to do much more of that but in this day and age with the internet the way it is you could do one thing that you don't like and or something you did five years ago or like a friend's going to do something and it's like some topless scene you're like do you really want to do that no one's going to see me now it's like mm. yeah that's when you start popping off it's like that's all they're going to see so when you say um you, it's good to really know what you want to do or when you when when do you when do you need to make that decision? I think really the earlier you can do it, the better. And like of course a, like you can a change. nineteen year old, an eighteen year old actress oh, yeah. listening oh, to this right sure now you should, should figure out for the next twenty years what they do or don't want to do. Yes, and stick to it from this day forward. And never. <laughs> <laughs> but, but really, no, I'll, I'll tell you something. There was a, an acting teacher I had, one of my first ones, Simon Longmore, and what he said was. Um, figure out a list of the thing your no list or something I forgot what he called it but the things that you would just never want to do and if you know that list now when that opportunity comes and presents itself to you in your face with the job dangling there you won't regret later the, the decision you made and right, I remember right. I'd stuck to it because I did a s- small film called Rome You Must Die and there were three of the biggest most powerful people on the set were trying to convince me to to do like part of that nude and I'm like We'd been waiting for 14 hours, and they were going to cancel at the end of the day. And they had said by the end, they were like, um, I said, I'm, that's, mm, that's not, I, I'm, I don't do that. But trust me, it's going to be sexy. And, of course, I turn away like freaked. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this better be good. And then <laughs> Now the I have girls, to be sexy. Right, <laughs> now yeah. I must be sexy. So it all started then. <laughs> but um, I was really, really proud. I stuck to that. And 
that's how I got my mom to get on my side and be supportive of me that I did a kissing scene with another girl (laughs) (laughs) where I took her top down. Now, what is mom? Is mom in Vancouver? Mom and dad are both in Vancouver. And and what do they think of the Maxim stuff? Oh, geez. They don't know. I I don't know if I told them. They don't know? I did another one, and it's going to come out in They have the internet, right? (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. My mom follows me on Twitter now. She's like, oh, I heard you were at the concert last night. Yeah, Mom, you're not supposed to. Yeah, Yeah, now that you know she's on your Twitter, does that change what you Twitter? (laughs) Well, I've thought about that, you know? It's like mom knows everything. (laughs) She knows more about about me than she's ever known, I think, you know? Oh, that is weird. Yeah, because she's following. Are you still invited over Sunday dinners? (laughs) Of course. That's exactly what it is Sunday night dinners. But but mom's okay with. Mm, they weren't so good. What was really weird is as soon as I got the first first issue, I gave I brought it over to their house, our our house. I can't remember where I was, and uh, I somehow wanted. I guess I wanted their approval. Or I wanted some kind of okayness, and um, it was not very comfortable. My dad didn't look at me. I don't know why why I was showing it to my dad, but he pre- basically eclipsed this glass of like either <laughs> wine or water in my face and. Uh, he just said we don't was, talk about that. No, he just said he was disappointed. I mean, the, the fanboy attention started when you played Boomer, um, the sometimes good, sometimes evil Cylon. We've talked about it on Battlestar Galactica. The series may be over, but uh, you do have one last outing with Battlestar. This is a, a major role in the upcoming telemovie called The Plan, which was directed by series star Edward James Olmos. What can you tell us about that? I can tell you that you're going to see some things that you haven't seen and some things that you have, but in an entirely new light. So uh, we're not necessarily... The cagey answers. Uh, I don't know where that just even came from. <laughs> it just kind of came out <laughs> yeah, okay. too much. What does that video. mean? What did you mean? It means essentially we're going to go back, revisit some major moments that we've seen and some new ones that you haven't, but that clearly are going to make sense in the tapestry of what we've already experienced as Battlestar Galactica. And you're going to see it from another perspective, which is essentially the silent perspective. Mm. So this is a side that you never knew, that you never saw, that you had a lot of questions about, and then you're going to find out some of the answers. You're going to like some of them and some of them you aren't. And what I'm really interested in, and I doubt it's going to happen, but I'm interested to see if anyone's actually going to change their staunch, loyal you know, position. If anyone, if any of the human side are going to switch over. Last year, you said that if you could have started Battlestar Galactica now. Yes. Well, you know what I'm about to say? No, I don't, but it just makes me smile anyway. <laughs> you, you, you I s- know what I think. Go you, ahead. you said um, you wouldn't, you would try not to be as afraid that you'd be uh, more free with your expression within the character. Uh, what were you afraid of when you started Battlestar Galactica? Hmm. I think I was afraid... Well, I was afraid of sucking, I guess. I was afraid of being bad. I think I, I didn't... Um, there, It's weird because you, you're afraid of things that you don't even know. They kind of just lie in your psyche. And I just knew I was afraid. I mean, clearly the people that I was working with were of a very high quality and, like, and, and a lot of... The caliber of talent there was amazing and dedication. And there and there was me. I got hired to do this really small part that got way too big and I got freaked out because there was... I, I knew that... Michael Reimer, who had done our miniseries in our first episode, was not along for every single one. And then I just assumed the director always knew more than the actor. And then the first ep- director afterwards had said, she clarified a bunch of the points, and then she asked me if that's right. Mm-hmm. And I looked at her, and then the, everything melted away. The safety net was gone, everything. Um, so I ended up being cautious and afraid and pushed and for a while until another director came along and finally said, I've been watching. It's like, you're pushing. Stop doing that. I was like, thank you. I was so happy. Less, less afraid now? Yes, absolutely. The, the uh, border. Yeah. Um, with la- last year, there was a WGA strike with the Writers Guild, and uh, Edward James almost told us to watch our episodes again. He's like, "Why don't we watch the last one we filmed so we can all get back on page?" Because it's been three months. So we watched it again, and this was only a few months back. And I saw the work, and I was like, Are "You kidding me? Is that what I've been doing? Is it's it still at that point? It's not any better." And so I had. 10 episodes left and I went all right I'm just gonna throw it all to the wind it's like I'm all in hmm. it didn't matter if I, I was gonna just you know, if I was gonna lose everything it's like it was more important to try something and, and go there instead and it was it was thrilling it's good to have you here thank you nice to see to you again here. and uh best of luck with the border we'll be we'll be watching thank you so will I actress yeah, I do I'll be watching CBC. myself as well uh, <laughs> Is that what you meant? No. Yes. <laughs> I will also be watching Is the that border, bad? <laughs> Actress Grace Park. You can catch her as Homeland Security Agent Liz Carver on the CBC television series The Border. And for more information, go to theborder.ca. Grace Park was with me here in Studio Q. 